going on everybody uh just doing a quick intro here yeah so i got bored there friday and was looking for a comic to do and found mad balls number one so that is what you're going to hear me experience but before we get into that maybe you don't know what mad balls are i'm over the age of 40 and i can remember as a child in the 80s there were these toys i remember picking one up at the mall and they're balls that were made of like foam but they were really gross so they came out it looks like in 85 i'll play a commercial here in a few so you guys can kind of get a sense of what the advertising sounded like for these things but we have the original series and i I talk about this in the podcast but one of the characters from the original series one of the mad balls from the original series was called crackhead basically the top of a skull was missing and you could see his brain going into the wikipedia here I'm going down through the original series Mad Balls, and I recognize every single one of these names as being one that comes up in the comic, except for one called Bash Brain. And sure enough, when you go through the description of who Bash Brain is, that was originally Crackhead. And it says, due to the unpleasant connotations of Crackhead as a slang term for a drug user, they renamed that character. Let's just go ahead and we'll get into the quick episode. Mad balls, mad balls, balls. gross for one, gross for all. We play with a mad ball, they're gross, funny, yucky, sick. There's eight, so you can take your pick. We throw, catch, it's uh uh-oh fun. There's so much gross in every one. Freaky fun is what they're for. There's so much ugly, so much more. Gross for one, gross for all. We play with a mad ball. ball. We play with a mad ball. We play with a mad ball. Mad Mad ball. ball. Freaky fun for everyone, sold separately from Amtoy. Mad ball. That synopsis is coming up, but first let me talk about Amazon Music. If you're looking for a good platform that can fill those musical needs, Amazon Music has you covered. If you head to getamazonmusic.com slash W2M Network, you can get a free 30-day trial where you can check out over 70 million songs. That's getamazonmusic.com slash W, the number 2, M Network for that free 30-day trial. Uh, bored on a Friday night. I'm going to experience Mad Balls number 1 from Star Comics. And you may remember Mad Balls. Uh, Mad Balls came out in the a- late 80s, I believe, the late 80s. Uh, these gross versions of just balls that you can throw at people. They're kind of like decapitated heads. They're definitely odd. The cover of the comic actually shows some of the ones that I remember. Like there's this one that looks like a cyclops has a ring in its nose and one horn on its head. Uh, There's another one that looks like a baseball, but it's like got its tongue sticking out. There's one that's just a straight up eyeball. Uh, There's one that looks like a mummy's head. So they're creepy and nasty looking. And of course, they would appeal to boys back then. And I remember I had one, Uh, I believe. Gosh, I can't remember which one I had. It might have been this green one. But like this other one right here, like half of its skull is off of its head and its brain's showing. So it's and it's just, you know, it looks yucky. Uh, But apparently they made, it said it was number one in a three issue series, but there's 10 issues of this. So we've got to get, we got to get into this to see what kind of a story they could make out of this. I mean, on the front here, we have a a mad scientist looking character. This is on the front cover. Egad, Snivelich, these mad balls even gross me out. And it looks like he's creating them out of like a cauldron. And there's like this Igor guy, looks all goofy. And then we have another one of the mad balls here that's surrounding the cover that says he hasn't seen nothing yet. Ugh. And the one that he is creating looks like one that I've seen before where it's kind of like a it looks like a skull. So, yeah, let's see how in the world they can turn this into a comic book. How do you take this property and create a comic? Uh, so this came out in September of 86. Cover dated September of 86, volume 1 number 1 Mad Balls. All right, let's see. We got a truck running down the road here. Toy truck. Harry's Toys. Nope. A black cat suddenly appears in his path, and he swerves and crashes. Oh, no. He makes it. He's all right. He just jostled a bunch of stuff, and the back door came open, and a bunch of bouncy balls came out. Eight rubber balls bounce down the street onto the property of Ruin. R-U-I-N. Research Unlimited and Nucleonics. 
secret laboratory. Well, you know, they landed in some toxic ooze. Boy, if that wasn't a staple of the 80s into the 90s, the slime. The slime that would turn you into stuff. Mutating. All right, so the title of this story is Mad Balls and the, the Evil Dr. Frankenbeans. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the balls hit this nasty nuclear waste and have now mutated into some... They've gained a consciousness. And the one that's an eyeball is actually able to speak somehow, even though he has no mouth. Pretty crazy. So written by Michael Gallagher, penciled by Howie Post, Roberta Edelman's anchor, Rick Parker, letterer, and George Russo's colorist. Oh, okay. So these guys have some names. Our eyeball is called Oculus Orbis. Then the Cyclops guy I was talking about earlier, his name is Hornhead. Uh, ooh, this has a very, like... Dexter's Lab kind of look, because we come across some kids here. They're about ready to play baseball, and the Mad Balls have found them. Okay, all right. Whoa. <laughs> so the baseball that always, he's got this big grin on his face and his tongue hanging out. His name is Screamin' Mimi, and the one with the brain sticking out of the top of his head, his name is Crackhead. Crackhead. 1986, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. I mean, they had to know what they were doing, right? Crackhead. All right. Okay, so Kid knocks it out of the park, and Screaming Mimi replaces the ball with himself. Oh, man, this is bad. So they're, like, scaring these, terrorizing these kids, making very, very bad puns, like our Oculus Orbis. You know, they just don't see eye to eye. I, Dude, ugh. how do you get... 10 issues out of this. Okay. Well, all right. So the kids are running away. Oh, here we got everybody's name. We've got Screaming Mimi. We've got Hornhead. Skull Face. Everyone, everybody's scared of me. No bones about it. <laughs> oh, that guy's name is just Arg. A-A-R-G-H. Dust Brain. That's the mummy. Slobulus is uh, this, oh man, eyeballs hanging out. Slobber hanging out of his mouth. Oh, Crackhead and Oculus Orbis. Oh, okay. Well, the resident genius kid has declared these balls as ugly, wacky, freaky, and gross, but they have good in their hearts. Let's have a ball. I'll see each one of these kids end up with their own personal mad ball. Oh, boy. Dr. Victor Frankenbeans. Here's all the fun that these kids are having. Dr. Victor Frankenbeans. Apparently, <laughs> Frankenbeans. Uh, uh, head scientist for the nuclear plant or ruin nuclear lab. Oh, he wants Snivelish to go out there and find out where this laughter is coming from. He can't stand it. Frankenbean sees the mad balls and he's declared it his goal to get the Nobel Prize for discovering this new species. Snivelish shows up and tries to get them to go into the box and they're a little bit wise. The mad balls are like, nah, not happening. And they scare them off. Okay. Frankenbeans is upset. Snivelich came back with no mad balls. Oh, he came up with... <laughs> Uh, Frankenbeans is, I think, going to get even with the fact that those mad balls did not come back to the lab with Snivelich by... He's got something called... Well, he's got a, a test tube filled with some green liquid, and he's got a book in his hand that just says Nasty Formula. So it must be a really big formula to have a freaking book. Oh, here comes Dr. Frankenbeans, pretending to be a nice old man, trying to give these kids some lemonade. Oh, Skullface fell for it. He's drank, he drank it. Oh, no. So Skullface drinks this thing, and he's got the helpless hiccups. Frankenbean says he is the only one that has the power to stop the hiccups. That's pretty mean, man. I hate having the hiccups. He created a formula that gives people endless hiccups. Well, as Frankenbean runs off with Skullface in hand, Slobulus follows after him. Oh, man. It's like, okay, so Slobulus gets in front of of Frankenbeans and, and coats the ground with slime out of his mouth. Oh, Frankenbeans falls into his own toxic waste pool. Ooh, this could be bad. Well, the helpless hiccups are cured by turning a mirror on the skull face's face, scaring himself. And now he no longer has the hiccups. Wah, wah. So Dr. Frankenbeans may not actually be a doctor. That might actually be his first name. Like, as in doctor is his first name. Because it's spelled D O K. T-O-R. Doctor Frankenbean. Oh, he's sticking his head out of the toxic waste pond where there's a three-eyed, what appears to be a frog, and he declares that he will finish off the mad balls. And that's the end of that first story. Okay. 
I kind of had a feeling this would happen. It would. There's probably going to be two or three stories in this one comic. Well, let's see what this next one is. It's Mad Balls in Corn Erd. Oh, jokes abound here between the Mad Balls. Hey, Slobulus, are you part basketball? Why do you ask, Hornhead? Because you dribble so well. Har, har. Looks like they're playing hide-and-seek with the kids. Yeah. I hope they're going into a cornfield. Lots of puns. Oh, boy. Whoa. Okay, so the kids who were hiding from the Mad Balls have decided to... They're trying to come out of this cornfield that they were hiding in, and the corn is alive. Come along, children. The master is waiting. It's supposed to be some stout corn stalks. Jeez. Grabbing a hold of kids with their leaves and running off with them. The sentient corn has taken all the kids to a barn, and the Mad Balls are still looking for them. Oh. So the Mad Balls have decided to give up trying to find the kids and realize that something must be wrong. So Oculus Orbis goes into the sky and finds one of the kids' hat laying on the ground. So they m- know now that there must be something wrong. Oh boy. This is like the Mad Ball version of a fastball special. They have something called the totem pole formation. Where, what is, why? Why makes no sense. So the Mad Balls can fly, right? I mean, they can bounce. They've also, I mean, they can fly around. But they've reached the barn, and they're trying to see through this window, and they've decided to stack on top of each other in this totem pole formation. So Oculus Orbis, who just flew into the sky a few seconds ago, is now relying on the other Mad Balls to stack and lift him up so he can look through a window. Okay. Oh, they see the kids. They're busting down the barn door. I'm about to become battering Rambo. <laughs> oh. So this guy, this evildoer here, is named Colonel Corn. Uh, turns out he fell into the slimy ruin pond and became a sentient corn stalk. Oh my gosh. Now I am corn sittering, ruling the world. Corn sittering, folks. Oh wow. So this guy's like relying on his pun power. That is but a small sample of my awesome pun power. Because he is like laying on the puns thick. My painful puns will paralyze you and make you my slaves. I don't know how that works. Oh, jeez. And just like in the medieval days, any attempt to escape would be feudal. F-E-U-D-A-L. Oh, that is horrible. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Run away as fast as you can. Ha, take a flea powder. F-L-E-E. So the Mad Balls are are reeling from these puns this guy has just pulverized them with. And they're regrouping outside. Oh, okay. So here's the deal. They're going to use Dust Brains, I guess, wraps, mummy wraps, to wrap them all into one big Mad Ball. Ah, here we go. Dust Brain figures out the best way to defeat this guy is to wrap his mouth shut. Oh, no. So Colonel Corn. Just hit a button and unleashed the corn ball. <laughs> oh, man. This is actually pretty funny. I mean, when you think about it, yeah, it's silly and goofy, but my gosh, he his secret weapon is a corn ball who continues to make corn ball puns. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how they're going to beat this guy. Yeah, uh, well, the mad balls are laying at the feet of Colonel Corn after the corn ball hit him with some more pulverizing puns. The kids, meanwhile, they've been watching this all go on. They've been tied up with corn stalks. Okay, well, the young lady is given the Mad Balls a pep talk. Lynn. Lynn is given the Mad Balls a pep talk, trying to get him back up and running here. Oh, they're getting screaming Mimi mad. You Mad Balls look like sad balls to me. <laughs> oh, man. Apparently when Screaming Mimi gets upset, he you wouldn't want to see him angry. Oh, here we go. So Screaming Mimi gets mad and when he gets mad he gets really hot and that is causing a problem for these corn based villains as they begin to pop they become popcorn oh screaming mimi makes it so hot in fact that the barn explodes so the barn has filled with popcorn colonel corn it's just a cob now (laughs) oh man oh wow And the kids all sit around outside the barn, watch some TV. They're actually watching Care Bears, of all things, uh, on the TV with the Mad Balls, eating the popcorn. Jeez Louise. Well, that's it. (laughs) We've come to the end. Oh, wow. What a trip. 
Well, this was interesting. I almost read Punisher number one tonight and did something on that, but instead I went with Mad Balls number one just because I wanted to see what they would do. And I cannot believe that they made 13 issues out of this, but I will say that it is pretty darn funny. Granted, there are some really, really grown worthy puns that are just nonstop, but there are some gags that are somewhat hilarious. So. Hey, it's plug time, and you all know what that means. This would be a good time to plug the sponsor of the W2M Network, and that is Grammarly. For you, the listeners of Source Material, Grammarly is offering a free download of the Grammarly software. Grammarly's AI-powered products help people communicate more effectively. Grammarly helps you write mistake-free on Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and nearly anywhere else you write on the web. Grammarly corrects hundreds of grammar, punctuation, and spelling mistakes while also catching contextual errors, improving your vocabulary, and suggesting style improvements. To download Grammarly today, go to getgrammarly.com slash W2M network. Again, that's getgrammarly.com slash W, the number two, M network to download Grammarly for free. Thank you all for joining us. Make sure to give that Rattlich in Broadcasting Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts we have to offer. We are at home on Spreaker, but you can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and recently we have hit the air on Spotify. Find your favorite podcast platform and type in R-A-D-U-L-I-C-H to subscribe for some great content. If you enjoyed this show, please feel free to share and spread the word. And as always, we appreciate any feedback and look forward to entertaining you again soon.